well gone to do so. The time is time line. We go through the time is time line. Is this truly the dumbest timeline? What's up, everybody? It's your host, Brian Holiday, with another edition of The Dumbest Timeline. Last week's episode, I talked heavily about Stephen Thaller, the man, the myth, the legend, <laughs> question mark, big question mark, huge question mark, because again, I feel like everything that he was doing had to do with trying to get his name solidified in history as a person who broke the bubble on getting AI accepted and recognized as an inventor which is almost akin to being recognized as sentient and alive because to invent something is to have the spark of creation. And Dabas n- is in no way a creator. It's not. And neither is Mid Journey. And I bring up Mid Journey because Théâtre d'Opéra Spatial, a piece that won the Colorado State Fair back in 2022 that was co-created by Jason M. Allen along with Midjourney. Now, at the time when it won, it caused a ruckus because when people found out that Allen used AI, they were very upset. Now, Allen isn't the only one, though. Chris Castanova was initially granted a copyright for their comic book Zaria of the Dawn, which featured AI-generated imagery. In the end, they had posted that the art in the comic that they created, that they wrote, that they thought of, that came to them as a spark. Sorry, Dabas, but again, you need a spark to be considered an inventor. But came to them. And yes, again, Like we keep saying, Chris probably spent most of their life, or maybe a short period of their life, looking into art, learning about art, learning about the creation of a comic book, appreciating comic books, reading comic books, reading different books, coming up with ideas, developing, processing, learning, appreciating, and came up with a comic book. And yes, a lot of people, again, are always going to say, and I, I hear the argument already. I know the argument is there where people are going to say, well, it's just unfair because it can do it faster. It just does it faster. And it's not fair for you to say that it doesn't count because it can do it faster. Some people are faster than other people. Well, again, AI is not a person. It's a system. It's a computer. It's processing information faster. Calculators can calculate faster than some people. There's a reason you weren't allowed to bring calculators into the classroom when I was a kid and you had your exams. You had to do the work yourself. Here's an equation. Get to the answer. Why? I have a calculator. You won't always have a calculator. I literally will always have a calculator in the future of my life. I now live in a world where I always have a calculator in my pocket. But it was still good for you to teach me to develop the skills to understand these things on my own. And there's a reason that these tools are there to help us calculate faster, but we don't pretend like the calculator gets to run the world. And that's what it feels like when it comes to AI. And that's what it feels like when I hear that Chris Casanova created a comic and used AI imagery, but now wants to have their images copywritten but you didn't make the images. You didn't create it. And the same goes for you, Mr. Allen. Jason M. Allen, Théâtre d'Opéra Spatial, beautiful name, for a piece of art that was made by Midjourney. I get it. You took that image that was generated after, from what I understand, 624 prompts, 624 prompts to get the image you wanted which probably felt crazy but guess what that's still prompts it's still telling the machine still 
creating a prompt so that it creates an image. And then even after that, you took the image and you had to put it into Photoshop and you had to tweak the image. The hands were probably wrong. The sky might have been slightly off. The circles were too perfect. Something to consider. Sometimes the image is too perfect. AI doesn't have the same artistic flair. It's essentially just mimicking all the other flair. Van Lem, a guest who was on my show a couple episodes ago, would explain to you that Mid Journey was taught off the backs of all these wonderful artists. Their images and their content scraped never to be paid for their work. And then Jason M. Allen is turning around and trying to copyright the image that was created by Mid Journey because people are using that image because there's no copyright on it. And he's upset and he wants his rights. What rights? You didn't create the image. You know what? I'd say this. If you want to get paid and to copyright the image, get Midjourney to release the information for every image that was used in the building of the AI. Once you get all that information, you go out there and you pay every one of the artists that Midjourney essentially stole from a fair wage for the work that was stolen for them to build Midjourney. And once you've paid all of them, copyright the image and give them a percentage of the art because that's the only way it's fair. One of the things that bothers me, but I also appreciate about the NFT model was NFTs were just images on computers, which felt kind of crazy. But one thing that was great about it, at least to me, was the idea that if you bought this from the artist and then sold it to another person, the artist got 10% of that sale. Because you were selling their work, and as much as it belonged to you, you could still give the artist 10%. Not even could. As I, as I understood it, they automatically were meant to get 10%. Giving them that percentage, a recognition that they created this originally, and that even though you own it and you're going to profit off of it, because ideally you're only selling the art because you're making more money, but they are forever also able to collect. Because they did create the thing. And I think that was beautiful. And I think with something like Mid Journey, which again, when Van Lem was here, she explained it's too late. You built it in a bad way. It's fruit from the poison and disgusting tree. Because we've seen some of the things that some of these AIs were trained on and they're disturbing. You just can't register, Alan. It's not yours. And constantly going back to the United States Copyright Office and constantly trying to get them to overturn their decisions because you don't think it's fair is such an odd thing to me. Because you didn't make this. You edited the image from something else. Yes, you came up with 624 prompts. Good for you. That probably took a lot of brain power. I almost feel like if you put that much effort into making the art piece, you might have still won. But here we are again. You filed an appeal for the Copyright Review Board. You're going to the U.S. District Court for the District of Colorado, and you're trying to get this piece of art recognized as an original piece. Or even if I'm, I'm not even sure what you're trying to get it recognized as. Because it's open and public knowledge that it's AI. You want to copyright it. You want to put a copyright on something that they keep telling you you can't. It needs to have a human element to it. And your Photoshop is not enough. They've said it. They've already passed judgments. It's an interesting thing to me also to see that the people who are constantly going back over and over, Thaler... Allen, and even Casanova, 
I understand that Casanova is a non-binary person, but you know, some of you know. I won't even have to say it. Some of you know what I'm saying. Look them up. Look them up. You'll see why. You'll see what they have in common. What is the thing that they have in common that feels comfortable enough to constantly just keep pushing and pushing at the edges of this system and demanding the system falls into line with what you want? And what other groups have asked for some recognition and the rights to have the things they create be recognized, but constantly are told no, and then just have to accept it? Because if you don't, you're seen as a troublemaker and a problem causer. And I don't know. I'm just saying. I'm saying. I'm not saying. You know what I'm saying. Some of you know what I'm saying. Some of you will say I'm probably too scared to say it out loud. It's not that I'm I'm afraid to say it out loud. I'm hoping you get the message. Because you should. You should probably get the message. Look them up. Alan. Thaller. Castanova, three people who, using AI in whatever form, whether it's Thaler's Dabas, that he believes is a fully, sorry, partially sentient, I'm not even sure, or Alan, who used Midjourney, knowingly used an AI to create a piece of art, or Castanova who themselves acknowledged on social media that they are an AI artist, all three of them trying to get their art copywritten so that they can profit off of it, knowing full well that the source, and Dabas was trained with whatever it was trained with. I think we know. I don't think Thaler went around asking permission from every person for the images that it, they used to train their AI. If they, if he did, I'm wrong. And if he did, I'm, I'm very sorry. Thaler, if you went and fairly and properly got all those sources that you put into that system, fair, square, and Renumerated, I respect it. I do. I don't think you did. There's nothing indicating you have. I've read this Economist article. I've read all these articles. I've looked through all these notes. But we'll see. Ultimately, at the end of the day, I feel like we keep coming back to the message that, at least for me, AI is very interesting. I find it fascinating. I hope we are able to get AI to a point of just and fair use, properly trained, built the right way with consent from people, not just scraping the internet, not all these big AI firms saying, well, if you take away my right to steal from people, I can't live. <laughs> what? What are you? They've, they've admitted that. They've admitted that if you take away, if you made them pay for everything that they use to train their AIs, they would not be able to build the AIs. They've admitted it. They've told us the truth about stealing. They literally built AI off the idea of it is better to ask for forgiveness than to ask for permission. And we have to live with that, that we live in a world where wealthy people went around stealing from other people, built AI systems. Those AI systems in turn were used by other people to generate art or create things. And now people want to copyright that. They want to put a stamp on it to says that this is mine and you shouldn't be able to profit off of it. Even though everyone else is profiting off of it. Every time we have this conversation about AI, every time we look at someone like Alan Kashanova 
and Thaler and I, even myself giving them the space and the time in this conversation. But I had to bring it to you because if you're an artist out there, these are the names you should be paying attention to because, again, they are trying to push at the limits of the rules and regulations that are protecting us right now. They want to create a world where AI art counts as original pieces. And if that ever happens and set, they set precedence, it will affect every single artist out there. So I highly recommend if you are an artist out there in the world, know those names and keep track of those lawsuits. The Jason M. Allen one for Théâtre d'Opéra Spatial, and I keep saying it with that flair because it deserves it. It's, it is a very beautiful piece, a very beautiful piece of stolen art, but it is beautiful. But pay attention because these cases, if ever they change the rules and regulations, it will affect all of you. Now, I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Some of you might think, well, hopefully it does crack. Anyways, these, this has been a crazy long episode probably. I tried to cut these down as much as I could. I cut out a lot of the pauses because there's, there's literally moments where I had like a minute pause of just me thinking about how ridiculous this whole situation is. And ideally, I've edited it in a way that you didn't hear that minute pause. You hear my heart breaking a little bit that this is the world we live in, but you didn't hear the pause. And with that said, that's the end of this episode. I want to thank you guys for tuning in to another edition of The Dumbest Timeline. I'll be back with another one soon. And don't forget to keep track of these legal cases. I will do my best to keep you up to date. But if I'm not there, uh, I'm putting links to articles or anything. I, I can't put a link to everything that I found because it's... It, would look like a bibliography from a high school paper, but I'm going to put a couple links in the description and ideally you can go through some of those links and tell your friends again, Jason M. Allen, Chris Casanova and Stephen Thaler, Dr. Stephen Thaler. I should put a little respect on his name, even though what he's doing is crazy. And with that said, I'm out. Have a good one, folks. The Dumbest Timeline, Series 2, AI, hosted by Brian Holiday. Produced by Brian Holiday for Brian Holiday Productions. Co-produced in partnership with Free X Agents Media. Theme song by Jasper Q. Jones. Mixing by Brian Holiday. Enjoyed the show? Follow this show on Spotify or review it on Apple Podcasts. Lastly, subscribe to The Dumbest Timeline on your favorite podcast app. Thanks for listening.